Alright, so linear functions. Uh, a function is just a fancy way of saying the relationship between um, a y and an x coordinate. And in our course, uh, a function is something where for one x, I get one y. And, but that's all we need to know about it. Remembering back to year 11, we've got this idea of y equals mx plus c, where m is going to be our gradient of the line, and it's written down there, and c is going to be the y-intercept. So when we have equations written in the form of y equals mx plus c, we can read gradients and intercepts straight away. For argument's sake, just off the side here, when you have y equals negative 3x minus 10, its gradient is negative 3, because it's in the spot where m should be, and its y-intercept, or the c part, is also negative 10, again, because it's where that c value would be. Right. And I can even change the equation up slightly. I can say something like y equals 10 minus x. Okay, Everything's still got m's and c's where they need to be. It's just I've written it slightly differently. C here is positive 10. It's there. And x, the gradient, the thing in front of m, and I'll just highlight it here, is this value here, which is negative 1. So I can rearrange those, and it still means the same thing. Its gradient is minus 1, its y-intercept is positive 10. And when it comes to gradient, it's just rise over run. Or the, and when we talk about rise, we're talking about, you know, how much does it change between two points and how much does it run between two points? That's what we're looking at. All right, example six here says complete the table of values using the linear function, then graph it on a number plane. All right, so first of all, um, let's complete the table of values. So that just pretty much means sub these values in every single time you see x. All right, so every single time I see x, so for the first one, for argument's sake, it's going to be y equals 2 lots of negative 2 minus 1. Evaluate that. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4. So we're going to end up with negative 5. When I substitute negative 1 in, so move out negative 2, put in negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Substituting in 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 1, we end up with minus 1. And we're starting to see a pattern here. Our x values are going up by 1 each time. And each time our x goes up by 1, our y is also increasing, but it's increasing by 2. We can see that pattern happening there. So if I increase it by 2, this will be 1, um, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and that pattern will continue for any x value I want. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Time to graph that. So just off to the side here, I'm just going to quickly draw in Um, a number plane. Now, for you guys, when it comes to it and when it comes to an exam, um, this is going to be expected to be done with a ruler. 
every single time. So I would encourage you to use a ruler. And then all you need to do is plot points. Now you only need two points to form a straight line. So there's a point there, and that point there is zero minus one. Also the y-intercept. And I'm just gonna pick a second point that I know lies on that line somewhere. I'm gonna pick the point two, three. So that's one, that's gonna be two, one, two, and that's gonna be three. That's where they're gonna meet. And then I just join those two dots with a straight line. And finally, I give it a name, y equals two x minus one. All right, remembering to do all that with a ruler. So just in summary, two points is all you need to draw a straight line. And off you go using rulers everywhere. Question B says, find the gradient and the y-intercept of the line. There's our y-intercept. So for part B, y-intercept is equal to negative one. And just highlight some other spots where it occurs. We can see it in our table of values when x was zero, y is negative one. And when we actually graphed it, we can see that point zero and negative one. The gradient of this line it's sufficient enough to write m because we know m denotes gradient. Um, and well, it's sitting right there. It's the two, it's positive two. Um, we can see it's positive two, our line's going uphill. And when we look at our table of values, as x is changing by one, y is changing by two. So our, um, our, our gradient's there. And how are the gradient intercept of the line related to the equation 2x minus 1. Well, there's our gradient, there's our y-intercept. It's pretty much saying it's written right there in the formula. Moving on to example 7. All right, here in example 7, it's saying what is the linear function? So in other words, when it says what is the linear function, it's saying what is the y equals mx plus c, or the equation of the straight line, for the points that we have. So we need to find the gradient and we need to find the y-intercept and we need to do them in that order. So first, we find the gradient. Second, we do the y-intercept. Right, a couple ways we can do gradient. I'm gonna show you um, the one way, but you can do it multiple but different. So gradient was rise overrun and if we flick back up to the notes remember it's the change in x over the change in y so um, be, being me i like to deal with positive numbers so what is the change there that is a change of plus five five to ten is going up by five what is the change from 22 to 47, well, 47 take away 22 to figure out that change, well, that is going up by 25. So our gradient is the rise, the y value, the 25 over five. So our gradient, when we simplify that fraction, is five. So gradient equals five, tick, job done. Now, we need to figure out the y-intercept. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do the y-intercept with this question. Now, I'm looking at it, and, if, and I'm noticing just here, I know minus 1. Minus 1 is very close to 0. So, if I was to rewrite that quickly down here, x, y, minus 1 was minus 8. Now, we want to go up by one, because when we go up by one, we're at zero. Remember our gradient is five. So cause our gradient is five, that means when we go, when we move across the x-axis by one, we're changing our height by positive five. So minus eight, plus five 
is minus 3. Cool. Now that we know that, we just plug them into the formula. But what happens if we don't have a table of values? How do we find the y-intercept? Well, we don't have x equals 0, but we can do something slightly different as well. We can use algebra for this one as well. So, or what we know is we know parts of the equation. We know that y equals 5, because our gradient was 5, x plus the y-intercept plus c. What we also know is we know a whole heap of points that work on the line. So we're just going to pick some points. Now, for this one here, I'm going to pick the points 5 and 22 just because I want to deal with positive numbers. And I'm going to sub that in. Whoops. Undo. Sub. All right, so when I substitute that in, I know that 22 is equal to 5 lots of, I'm trying to make it all colourful, 5 plus some random y value. All right, so what we know is that 22, it needs to be equal to 4, 5 fives, 25. It needs to equal to 25 plus c. Now, to solve this, we want to get c by itself, so just take away 25 from both sides. 22 minus 25 is negative 3. All right? Negative 3, negative 3. All right? Therefore, the equation or the linear function of this line is y equals 5x minus, whoops, minus 3. Example 8. Traffic researcher found a linear relationship, so a straight line relationship between the toll charge and the number of vehicles using the motorway each day. It's represented by this, this graph here, and here are the, the points on the graph that they use to graph this straight line. Um, notice that our graph has been shortened, so it, it, it looks like there's a, a, you know, it could be a misleading graph here that the, the, our axes have been changed, so be cautious with that. Let's go through and answer these questions. What is the independent variable? Well, the independent variable is whatever's on the x-axis. So this is our independent. Independent. So it's the tolls. Notice how our independent variable also rocks up here in our equation. Find the linear function of the form v equals mt plus c. Notice how it's very similar to y equals mx plus c. The reason that they've swapped y and x with v and t is that that's what they've told us on the graph. Our independent variable is measured in t dollars, the, the cost of the toll. And our dependent variable, what's happening is on the vertical axis, and this is they've denoted the number of vehicles by v. So let's go through and figure it out. Remembering we need two points. Now I'm looking up here at, there's two ways I could do it. I could read it from the table. I could read it from the uh, table of values. I'm gonna go table of values. And again, I'm gonna try and make life easy for myself while I can deal in decimals. Let's avoid it if we can. So I wanna know, I'm gonna pick the points four and six what have I done to get to the points four and six? It's gone up by two. The number of vehicles between those two points, well, from 5,600, it's actually decreased to 4,400. 
it's gone down by minus 1200. It's gone down by minus 1200. So just off to the side here, our gradient in this question here, and you can't see that, there we go. The gradient in this question, remember it's rise over run. Well, our rise was, it fell, it went down 1200 over two as it ran two. Simplify that fraction. If you're not sure, use your calculator and you're getting a value of negative 600. Now, if I have a look at this, I don't have zero anywhere. On my table, or on, on the graph, I can't see where it physically crosses. So I'm going to substitute points in and solve from there. Or I might, I'm just going to do that. Let's do it two ways. Um, so I'm just going to move this over here. So we know that we have the toll and we have the vehicle. And I want to get to zero. I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, and I have four. We know when there was the toll was four dollars, there was five thousand six hundred vehicles moving. Now remembering, as our gradient was minus six hundred, so as it went this way, it went minus six hundred. So I want to go back the other way. So I'm going to add six hundred. If I add 600, we're left with 400, 6,200. If I add 600 again, I get 6,800. If I add 600 again, I get 7,400. And finally, if I get all the way back to zero, I get 8,000. All right, so that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is let's set the equation up. We know that vehicles was equal to the gradient, negative 600 multiplied by the tolls plus some random y value. And I'm going to sub in the point for 5,600. So we know that 5,600 was equal to minus 600 times 4 plus C. Get our calculators out and let's do minus 600 times 4. And when we do that, we're going to be negative 2,400 plus C. All right, remembering now we need to add 2,400 to both sides. Add 2,400, we get 8,000 equals C, which is the same that we got up here. So coming over here, our find the function in the linear form. Well, our gradient equal negative 600, our y-intercept equal 8,000. Therefore, our vehicles was equal to negative 600 T plus 8,000. Part C. Part C says, what is the vertical intercept and what does it represent? Well, the vertical intercept, that's just our y-intercept. Just another way of saying y-intercept. And remember, if we think about our y-intercept, which is up here somewhere at 8,000, it's up there at 8,000 when our cost, when the toll is zero dollars. So if the road was free to use, no one had to pay anything to use it, you would expect 8,000 vehicles to travel on it. So what does it represent in this situation? Um, how many cars would use the road if there was no toll, is what we're looking at there, all right? 
Let's go question D. Question D says, uh, use the function to predict the daily number of vehicles using the motorway when the toll is $4.80. So remember, so when T equals $4.80, that's what we've been asked to value, evaluate. So let's figure out what happens. So uh, V equals negative 600 times $4.80, $4.80 plus 8,000, just substituting that value in. And now we just get our calculators out and we evaluate it. We get 5,120 vehicles would be using the road. And part E, part E says, what will happen to the number of vehicles using the motorway if the toll increases by a dollar fifty? The toll goes up by a dollar fifty. Well, if the toll goes up, we know vehicle numbers go down. So we need to compare some stuff. Well, let's see what happens when the toll equals a dollar fifty. So let's evaluate that. One. We know there's seven thousand one hundred vehicles that use the road if the toll was a dollar fifty. We know that. But we wanted to know the question says what happens to the number of vehicles using the motorway if the toll increases by a dollar fifty. So that means we need to make a comparison. But we know something. When the toll was zero dollars, you had 8,000 vehicles using the road. Then the toll went to a dollar fifty, and you had 7,100 vehicles using the road. It dropped by 900 vehicles. So the answer they're looking for here is a decrease. Shh, buddy. I don't want to be quiet. I'm almost finished. It was a decrease by 900 vehicles. Another way we could have figured that out is that the gradient represents... the change minus 600 times 1.5 equals a negative 900 in change so as that toll increased by $1.50 a dollar fifty times our gradient of negative 600 meant there was a change happening of negative 900 that's another way we could sort that out